Thanks for listening to Exploring the Wine Glass podcast, the podcast for people who love wine. I'm Lori Budd, a UC Davis winemaking program and WSET Level 2 graduate. You can find Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials as well as your favorite podcast catchers. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time. I promise I'll never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. On today's episode, we are returning to Wine for Med Street. Today's letter of the day is X, and it stands for Xenomavro. Xenomavro itself is a conjunction of the Greek words for acid and black, although this is often translated as black and sour. I was able to find a bottle at a local wine shop for $14.99, and I have to honestly say it would be case-worthy. But since this was the only bottle they had, it doesn't seem like there is more of this wine in my future. It was not an easy bottle for Debbie or I to find. I think Greek wines have so much to offer, but I am not 100% sure why they are so difficult to find. Part of me thinks it is because Americans don't like to drink wines that they have to Google how to pronounce. So I hope you enjoy this episode of Wine for Bet Street. Please let us know what wines or regions you would like us to research for season two, which is just around the corner. And don't forget to follow Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials, and remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Slancha. Welcome to Wine for Bed Street. Happy Monday. And yes. can I just say that this is the last Wine for Bed Street that I will be on this coast for two more times, and then next one, yay, I'm on the right coast for two months. <laughs> can't wait and i've only got uh seven seven more days of school and i get to oh go. really i the get school yes i get to go yay can't wait but anyway we are here on wine for bed street and the letter of the day is x and it is zeno mavro and another grape that was a little difficult to get right deb Yes, yes, but uh, my liquor store buddy in Stone Harbor, he pulled through it for me. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. I actually, for the first time, actually did use Wine Searcher, and uh, okay. when I looked it up, there happened to be a store in Hohokus that had it, so I only had to go like a 15-minute ride to go get it. They had two of the, two bottles in stock, so... Uh-huh. Yeah, so I called them up. They said they had it. Um, they were nice enough to um, hold it for me. Not that I thought there was going to be a mad dash to get these bottles, you know, in the in those two days before know. I could get there. But, right, you never know. So they held it for I me. I looked all over. I looked all over South Jersey. I looked um, in the Hudson Valley. No, I couldn't find it. Yeah. Um, and then finally, in a conversation with the – with uh, Jim Hand, who owns uh, Fred's Liquor um, for the Millbrook Wine Dinner, I said, I need a bottle of this wine. Can you get it? And he's like, yeah, no problem. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I got it for me. That is awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm going to bring Elmo up, and we are going to get started. tell you i just love elmo he is just so so cute i'm Lori. i began writing the blog to help people become more familiar with our wines dracina wines we are known for our cabernet francs from paso robles if you're interested in tasting our award-winning wines head over to dracinawines.com and check out all of our accolades and you can place your order there and um, it is perfect shipping weather right now, so we are good to go with that. 
Um, our wines have been consistently rated 90 plus in wine enthusiasts, and we got in gold medals, double gold medals for our Cabernet Franc in the San Francisco Chronicle. I have recently separated the blog and podcast to exploring the wine glass. So if anybody is having trouble finding the blog or finding the podcast, please reach out to me at exploringthewineglass at gmail.com because there's just something funky going on with Google Play and we'll, I, I'll figure that out eventually. But other than that, I just um, I graduated from WSET Level 2 with distinction and uh, founder of Cab Franc Day. So keep that in mind for December 4th. Deb, how about you? Hi, I'm Debbie Giaquindo. I am known as the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. You can find me at HudsonValleyWineGoddess.com. And I'm a certified uh, specialist of wine and a wine location specialist in port and champagne. And I was drinking Piper Heights champagne today. Yeah, and I was really he's, jealous. He's the new cellar master. He's, he's a cutie. Um, but anyway, um, I also um, have a book out called Tapping the Hudson Valley, Day Trips and Weekend Itineraries, uh, to visit all the craft beverage producers in the Hudson Valley and farmer's markets and sites and stuff. And you can find that on Amazon. And I'm co-owner of Happy Bitch Wines and also a partner in a restaurant in Stone Harbor, New Jersey called um, Kitchen, almost forgot there, what the hell I'm at, Kitchen 330, um, where I will be spending my entire summer, the hostess with the mostest, uh, seating everybody and talking. Um, the Philadelphia uh, Magazine called me a, a wine maven. Yes. So, uh, so. Come, come visit me for the next two months. Um, at 330 uh, 96th Street in Stone Harbor. Awesome. And uh, for Monday nights where I'll be here on Wine for Bet Street on the one Monday night. That's going to be my one night off a month. It is the all very important time. Slancha, my friend. Slancha. Okay, so. Ooh. It's minty. Interesting. It's minty, it's chocolate, it's herbal. I've got tomato. Yes. Little, yeah. Tomato leaf. Oh, I like. Do you? I'm not sure if I like no, it. No, 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 I do. Oh, I do. I'm not sure. I do, I do, I do. All right. I think it be a little bit more complex. Um, Mine isn't. Then my, <clears throat> I'm choking on it. Well, but. I don't think it's. I, don't think I think I expected something heavier and bolder. Oh. Oh, okay. Mm. I think that's what, from all the research I was doing on the characteristics. The very high tannin. It's very high tannin, but I yeah. got the impression that it was not a full-bodied wine. Although, right. I don't, this alcohol is a bit, woo, right now. Um, it's got to oxygen out a bit. I'm going to go into history. Zeno Mavro. Uh, can be compared to Nebbiolo based Barolos and Burgundy Pinot Noirs. So right there, that's why I didn't think I wasn't expecting yeah. a full bodied wine. Um, but thanks to its firm structure and complex aromatic profile, its character can only be described as unique. So as I was doing this, I kind of cracked up to myself, you know, because I do that quite a bit. I just do things that entertain myself. Um, so I'm like, oh, yeah, Nebbiolo. Yeah. And then I'm like, you know, Burgundy, yeah, unique. Uh-oh, that, that's like, you know, when, you know, when you set, get set up with the blind date and they go, yeah, he's got a nice personality. You know, like, that's what I was expecting. Like, I'm like, oh, if they're calling it unique, I don't know. Um, so that kind of scared me off a bit. Um, but I like it. It's very dark, um, very tight clusters there i uh, like super super tight clusters uh zinomavro itself is a conjunction of the greek words for acid and black though this is often translated as black and sour the grape is primarily cultivated in nauser that's the only one i'm going to pronounce correctly um gal <laughs> gal manisa amentayo repsani Trichmo, Syacita, <laughs> Velvet. What? So where's my mother-in-law when you need her? Yeah. Um, Velventos, 
And on a lesser scale to Mount Athos at Osa, Ionan. I, I don't even know why I wrote these things down because I have no idea what where they are or what they are. But Magnesia, Castoria, and Tricala. In 2010, the total global cultivated area was a uh, mere 1,971 hectares, which is just um, under 5,000 acres. So not a lot when you consider the whole global scheme there. And, um, and was entirely in Greece. But by 2013, it had grown to 2,239 hectares, which is uh, just over 5,500 acres worldwide. And you're gonna, and now they're starting to see uh, larger plantings done in um, Gansu, China. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, the other way of spelling this grape is uh, with a Y instead of the I. So um, it's still Zinomavro, but instead of X-I-N, you can see it as X-Y-N. And highly regarded as the finest red wine the country has to offer. Zinomavro is the only grape permitted in the mono grape wine region, you know, their appellation, their PDO, of Galmenensia Amentillo. And most importantly, look at that beautiful place. I know, I've, I've got some pictures there too. And that's that, that is Nausa, yeah. uh, now, uh, now sir. And I am in love with that place. That is, I just want to be there at this moment. I'm telling you, every all the pictures that you see of Greece, that's what it looks like because yeah. I've been oh. and I've been to the islands and really? it's beautiful. I want to go so badly. I, oh, it's so beautiful. This is the problem with Wine for Bet Street. I keep seeing all of these countries and all of these regions where we get these grapes mm -hmm. from, and I just want to go, 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 go. Um, mm -hmm. So um, it is now, sir, that is considered to be the finest of all the regions and to have the greatest potential for even more greatness. So I think they're focusing in on this region to be the you know, the spokes region for the area. Um, the area has a long history of wine production, so much that the artist uh, Cousinry wrote back in 1831. So I couldn't find an image of her, but this is artwork from her, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but Marie uh, Cousinry uh, stated, the wine of Nasser is to Macedonia what Burgundy wine is to France. I am in a position to say that the wine of Nasser is the best in the Ottoman Empire. With the vineyards in Nasser being almost all south-facing, the vines are sheltered so the extremes of climate that the other parts of Macedonia are subject to are really somewhat tempered there. So when they planted these vines, they, it, like they made this protective blanket by the direction that they planted them in. Uh, the sun exposure also balances the grapes varieties uh, natural high acidity. So in the early 20th century, the vineyards of Nasser, like so many other wine regions, uh, were infected by phylloxera, which led to their gradual discuss, uh, destruction. During the 1960s, two scientists um, Mrs. Caraco Dragona and Mr. Vlachos, who, let me tell you, there was not a picture on the internet anywhere of this Mr. Vlachos, um, were determined to revive the region. So in 1968, Batari, a well-known winery in Nauser, wines since 1879, they actually, um, with the scientists' help, um, converted, uh, the um, converted their trees and brush and just open space to uh, to Zeno Mavro. And so between these two scientists and the uh, Gianna Cochori winery, they're really the ones who have brought back the grape to its greatness. The total pro, uh, production of Nasser origin labeled wines is of the magnitude about um, 2 million 500 thousand liters, of which uh, 30 to 40 percent of it is exported. So that's a really large exportation percentage. 
they, you know, a lot of these uh, small uh, regions, it all gets consumed by their um, by their own people. And you're seeing, you know, like Francia Corda es exports out like 10 percent. And here you're looking at 30 to 40 percent exportation. So um, they're really heavily relying on their exports. Uh, there are three that are now mainly used. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Xenomavro is an ancient variety and it has lots and lots of clones, but there's only about three of them that are used now. And these three clones were used uh, or chosen because they produce the small berries and those bunches. So like what I was saying about how tight those bunches are. When carefully maintained, the wines produced are relatively fine grain tannins, delicate aromas, and very bright pigmentation. And I have to agree with that. Um, it's it's going to be kind of tough to see in this situation, but it's it is very Pinot Noir esque. It's a very yeah. light. It's a very light um, color. Um, beautiful, like a ruby color, light ruby. Um, almost, you know, it might even be a little garnet. Um, it's it's a pretty color, um, and I'm digging it. See, I'm not liking it that no. much. But you know what? Yeah. There's more of that tomato um, leaf coming out in mine. Yeah, and I, and I was talking to Michael, and um, it, it is a little sour on the finish, on the aftertaste. Mm. My, mine is, at least. But you know what? I'm like a sweet and sour fiend. Um, so I'm not really, like, sour to me is not not a bad thing. Um, it even has a very decent, decent length finish. The tannins, um, oh, and it's actually acid because I'm salivating. I'm like, yeah. um, it actually, the, the tannins are there strong enough that just hold that flavor onto your palate for quite some time. Um, yeah, I will agree there, but I'm not sure I'm liking the flavor. No, oh, I like it. I even get a little uh tamponade in it oh okay um i'm not sure that would that would be along my my lines of yay um yeah mine i'm not this is much more like um definitely the tomatoey um i don't get a lot of fruit no oh, okay that's more my What's in my bottle? What's in my glass? Right. Um, so I'm not, not sure I'm digging that. Well, but, we'll let uh, it open up a little bit, too, because last month, yeah. remember, neither of us liked it. And as it opened up a little bit, it was. Yeah, that's true. It got better. True. So I'll go on with characteristics. Kissimo Alvaro is really how you pronounce it. Okay, so I got this guy. You can hear it when he comes on. Okay. Forget them that the best red variety is called Xinomavro. Is that clear to you? Or do I have to say it once again? Let me say it once again. The best red variety of, of Greece is called Xinomavro. Xinomavro. <laughs> How's that? Xinomavro. Yeah, so that's how you say it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to say I went to my howtopronounce.com, and they uh -huh. said Xenomavro. Xenomavro. Well, that was coming from this guy, Greek. He I sounded like him. he knew what he was talking about. We'll I stick to that. My mother-in-law last week when I saw her how to say it, but. <laughs> Kessinomavro. It comes from the word Xeno, which is sour, Mavro, which is black. The grapes are medium sized, round in shape, with thick skin, white flesh, and a characteristic color of the skins ranging from a dark red to nearly black. Um, there's many different wines that are produced from this grape. We've got red, rose, sparkling wine, and sweet wine. Mm -hmm. So they make a variety of different wines um, from this grape. So it's grown pretty much in this where I've circled and have the arrow pointed, that's of uh, the Macedonia region in Greece. And there are four uh, superior quality 
uh, regions in northern Greece, and three of them are in Macedonia. One is in Tess. How do you say Tessali? Yes. Yeah. The uh, Nauser region is dedicated yes. purely to Kessin Maro. Right. And it's actually um, a, a cool climate. Um, and the cool climate of A M Y N D E O, Amidoa Deo. And that's where my wine is from. Okay. Um, in the appellation of Go and Nissa, they blend Kessimaro with at least 20% of Negoska. So it's kind of like different rules, like in France. Right. You know, how you have different areas and they have to do, you know, X amount. Um, so in the um, Appalachian of Rapsani, which is in the uh, Thess Alley uh, area, um, Kessinaro um, is blended with Stravato and Crisato um, in equal amounts. And when it's blended, it actually becomes easier to drink young. Um, it is a finicky grape that is difficult to grow, so it's kind of like, you know, Pinot Noir. Um, it is it's very sensitive to disease, and it's also susceptible to vintage variation. When it's poorly made, it's extremely sour. So if you buy a bottle and you're drinking it and it's extremely sour, it got to, you know, take that up with the winemaker. <laughs> I will fly to Greece and deal with it. Yes. Kessimaro is a very, very powerful grape. Extremely complex with high tannins, and it's very age-worthy. So it has a very interesting um, flavor profile. Um, you can find on the nose... Um, Dried plums, sun-dried tomatoes, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, truffles, olives, leather, earthy notes, aromatic herbs, aging wood will bring out the spice. Wet cardboard, no! Earthy and spice, um, different spices that, that will come out baking. from the um, baking spice. From the yeah, from the woods. And the flavor profile, what you'll taste on your palate, could be plum, cherry, raspberry, fig, tapenade, earth and spice. And when it ages, uh, flavors of leather, licorice, and clove can develop. You, yours is older than mine. Yeah, yeah. Mine's a 2014, so it's got yeah, a little, and so, little age. I am digging it. I really am. And now? A word from our sponsor. Did you know that Dracina Wines now has a wine club? We named it the Chalk Club. Draco is on our label, but Vegas was getting a little jealous, so we decided he deserved to be our club spokes dog. In Las Vegas, betting chalk means that you are betting on all of the favorites. We are betting that we are one of your favorite wineries, so we thought the name was apropos. The club is simple, yet a bit different than most. When you wager on us, we will ship you three bottles of wine twice a year, once in April and once in September. You can choose all red or mix of red and rosé. You immediately receive 15% off of all your wine purchases throughout the year, but what makes our club stand out is the progressive discount. Let your club membership ride into the next year. Your discount increases. Each year you parlay your membership, you receive an additional 5% off up to a planned maximum of 25%. Your club shipments are discounted to a flat $15, plus we'll cover your club shipping cost for your second shipment. That's $15 house money in a sure bet for you. So please head to our website, dracinawines.com, and find out all of the benefits of joining the Chalk Club and how to sign up. We've stacked the odds so that you can get our award-winning wines without breaking the bank. So once again, this is my bottle. Okay, so um, it's Young Vines. Now I think 
I think that most I read somewhere that it's most of their vines are 20 years old. So I think everything's pretty much considered young vines there. Um, Thymiopolis, uh, Caseno Mavro. And this is from the Nauser uh, region. So that automatically, as we know, that automatically tells us that this is 100%. Um, uh, I'm going to go with the, my way, Zeno Mavro. Uh, this is probably the winery that I have found the most information on. There was so much, so many different people talked about this winery. I was like, wow, this is a first um, when it's not an American winery. Um, so this is from um, Psalm Select. Okay? Uh, they say there is a lot of excitement around Thymiopolis, who has assembled an inviolable collection of vineyards in the Nauser villages of Trifolos and Ficha, which neighbor one another, but are nevertheless quite diverse. Trifilos is said to be one of the warmest subzones of Nauser, while Fischia, with vineyard altitudes climbing up to 500 plus meters, is one of the coolest. So many of these vineyards were originally farmed by his grand, the wine owner's, uh, winery owner's grandfather, also named Apostolus, but the family had long sold the grapes to others retaining only some for family consumption. It wasn't until the grandson, Apostolus, graduated from the University of Athens Enology program in 2000 that he actually began making wines uh, with the family name on them. So the first commercial release was 2003. So they are, yeah, yeah. So, um, I guess the grandson was like, enough of this. I'm done selling these grapes. You know, let's make our own wine from these grapes. Um, so they call him, a, they say he has a very charismatic personality and that that shows through his wines. So uh, Thymiopolis has also made a point of getting out into the wider wine world. And they are very well known in France. Um, so, and he has gone to France multiple times to gain inspiration and gain, um, I guess, techniques, learn techniques of how the French make wine in order to bring that back to his winery and produce wines. Um, the vines, oh, I was off. I thought it was 20 years. The vines are 30 years old and, uh, they usually ferment on ambient yeast and this wine in particular was aged 12 months in 500 liter French oak casks before bottling. And Barry and Brothers says that Apostolus Thymiopolis has been described as Greece's rising star and having tasted his earth and sky, Xenomavro, uh, they understand why. Uh, as I said, it's a family business and 95% uh, of their wine is exported. Wow. I know. Holy cow. Right? That's fun. Yeah. Um, uh, unlike many of their uh, neighbors, Thymopolis do, does not irrigate their vines. This was, adopt, this was chosen in order to avoid increasing tannins in the variety that is already well known for strong tannins and phenolic compounds. Uh, they have an organic approach that extends to the pest controls. They actually use uh, turkeys and guinea fowl to keep the locust and other unwelcomed pests at bay. Swarms of locusts coming to oh, the <laughs> so they they use a uh, guinea fowl and turkeys um i don't know what a guinea fowl is i'm gonna have to i think that's that like weird looking bird right like with the yeah. like the quail relative thing um so again for this group for this wine uh harvested by hand towards the end of september early october the grapes are carefully selected and uh taken to um a sorting tray and uh, to stainless steel tanks for natural fermentation. And then it actually does go through spontaneous malolactic fermentation. 
and um, they are actually hand bottled, unfined and unfiltered. I I don't know, you know, there's different levels of hand bottling, but that's insane. That's insane to hand bottle all of that stuff. Um, so that's what I've got. Uh, a lot of information about this winery. Apparently they are the, uh, he or he is the up and coming, you know, you know, glory winemaker of the Nauser region. Wow. So good for him. Yeah. Good for him. So mine is Alpha Estate wines. Much more, <laughs> um, uh, French looking label. Yeah. Um, so a little bit about them is Alpha Estate was founded in 1997 by the uh, viticulturist Makis Mavridis and chemist enologist Angelos um, Itridis. Uh, they produce. We, I just gotta say, we are so nailing these Greek words, man. Oh. And, you know, I grew up with Greek friends. I have a Greek mother-in-law who's who was, you know, grew up in Athens, you know, and everything. Doing um, her proud. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making them real proud. Um, so they own 75 uh, hectare vineyards um, in production. Alpha Estate is situated in the Empelia. Um Location, which means vines in the heart of Amadean region um, in the northern part of Greece. It's privately owned. Um, it sits on a plateau at an altitude of between 620 and 710 meters with northwest exposure. Um, the local climate is characterized by cold winters, sufficient rainfall, and snow, which provides the vines necessary necessary water supplies um, so that it can endure the dry summers that they do have. And they do have dry summers. Summers are great in Greece. I got my best tan in Greece <laughs> using baby oil. Oh, uh, but we were out there. <laughs> I was dumb and stupid. Um, I was young, dumb and stupid. Um, additionally, um, there's two uh, neighboring lakes. Um, yes. So that controls uh, the mild to semi-continental uh, climate. Um, the soil is uh, sandy clay texture um, with good drainage. Um, and uh, let's see here. The area allows the fruit to, to ripen. Um, in order to avoid extreme water uh, deficits during the summer, Root zone drying irrigation is applied to assure yeah. the optimum conditions for the, uh, for the grapes to mature. Um, Alpha Estate also, beside uh, Kessimarvo, it also grows oh, another really good Greek grape. Uh, Mavrodophine, Syrah Merlot, Pinot Noir, Tanat, Montebelluciano, Negro, Amaro, Barbera, Mal. Uh, Zia, Savignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and Gewürztraminer. All right. So what I have. They, they yeah, run the gamut. It, yep. So this is, um, this is a single vineyard. It's called Hedgehog. 100% Cassimarvo. Um, it's the Hedgehog is a sub-region. 690 meters altitude with northern exposure facing Lake uh, Petron and Mount Boris. Um, vinification method and aging, um, destemming, destemming, no crush, cold soaks, skin contact. Um, Wait, so they're doing a whole cluster? It, it just says no crushing, yeah, so they must cold soak, skin contact, alcohol fermentation at gradual increasing temperatures, uh, maintenance of wine sur lees for eight months. So it sits on its lees for eight months. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go back, go back and read that whole thing over. Did they de-stem? 
They said, yeah, they did do stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I was like, they holy, holy cow. Deep stem, okay. No, deep stemming, no crush. Okay. No crushing, cold soaked skin contact. Okay. Um, alcoholic fermentation at gradual increasing temperatures. Maintenance of the wine, sir leaves for eight months with regular stirring. 12 months in French oak, medium grain, white toasting, and 12 months in the bottle before be being released. So their tasty notes is bright purple, red color, complex, typical bouquet of small berries, red fruits, leather, and spices, vanilla, clove, pepper, with hints of ripe black blackberry, full mouth, rounded tannins, balanced acidity, and well-integrated wood tones, long aftertaste with intense quince aroma. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that, but... <laughs> So I was when when you were reading it, and I thought I thought they were doing a whole cluster. I was shocked because you yeah. don't typically do a whole cluster with such a tannic, a well-known tannic wine. Because whole cluster means you're throwing in the stems and everything, and the stems have the tannin in it. So that I I I zoned out when you said de-stemmed, and yeah. I, I was completely like, you know, winemaker, what what you know. I was... yeah, no, it is destemmed. Oh, okay. I'm starting to get a little bit of plum in here as this opens. No. So... But I, 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 mine does have a sour note to it. I'm Not really, 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 but really, really digging it. Sour note is on the, on the aftertaste. I'm glad you're digging yours. I'm not digging mine. There is, um, I would say there's a sour cherry element to it. Um... But oh, I, I can't be like, can you hear I'm like salivating? I'm like, oh, I, I'm mm -hmm. loving it. I might have to go back and buy the other bottle that's left on the shelf. I got some little bit of red fruits on that as yeah. it's opening. They're starting to become a little bit more fruits are starting to, to show. I got plum. I got a little red cherry. Yeah, I think we both kind of messed up a bit. Um, you know, we said that we only opened it. We only opened it like 15 minutes, um, you know, 7:45 or so, and um, that was that was bad. We should have known with the tannin and and the profile that it had. We should have probably opened it a little bit earlier than that. Um, and you know, I don't have a decanter here, so it's literally just pour a little bit out so that it gets a little oxygen. Um, yeah. I don't have any of my wine gadgets here in New Jersey, so I can't do anything. <laughs> but I'm digging so, it. I definitely am digging it. All right. So. Will this pair with the meatloaf that's downstairs waiting for me? Um. Uh, well, I don't know what yours is. I, I, th I think that the tomato sauce in with yeah. with it will. Um. But again, remember, I don't eat meatloaf, so. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, I will get back on, on my blog post how the meatloaf went. Yeah, myself. I, I think, I think it would. I, I think that, ha yeah. you know, um, if it's a lean meat, you know, like, um, is it turkey or is it beef? It's beef grass fed. Okay. So I, you know, it's going to be lean. You're going to have that tomato in there. He's probably yeah. going to put in some, some spices, which is going to bring out that herbaceousness in here. Yeah, um, we'll see. There's bacon in it, too. Oh, see, so... Well, uh, let's put the top on. A little smoke. I don't, we'll, There's no we'll smoke see. in here, but I think I think it's going to go well. You know, as I guess what, you know, meatloaf, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, meatloaf. Okay. I always laugh when I do the food pairings because I have no idea what any of these things taste like. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> so go, go for it. All right. Um, so part of the Greek culture is that uh, very rarely is there ever a meal that they sit down with that they're not drinking wine. So I got to go right off the bat that I dig that culture. You know, if they're going to sit down and eat, there's going to be wine on the table. So I like that. Um, we all know the adage that what you know, what grows together goes together. So Zeno Mavaro is, you know, a true testament to that. Um, 
with their firm tannic structure and their crisp acidity, uh, it calls for fat, you know, fatty meats, full of protein. Um, and I think that when you think Greek, you think lamb. I mean, I, I, I think they, I think they go hand in hand. Uh, so this would definitely pair with, um, you know, that those lamb kebabs, um, and that, um, that, uh, their Greek white sauce, their yogurt sauce or whatever. Um, it's called tzatziki sauce. What is it? Tzatziki. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go a little sidebar here because, you know, like I said earlier, I, you know, I crack myself up sometimes more than any cracking anybody else up. So I was making a recipe for something and, um, I read, uh, the recipe was for tahini sauce, right? Mm -hmm. But in my head, I had tzatziki sauce, completely right? Completely different. So, sauces. oh, oh, completely different. So I'm like going around and I'm going up and down Whole Foods and I can't find this stupid, you know, and I'm walking right past the tahini sauce, but I'm thinking this stuff, this white stuff. So I'm walking right past it. And I go up and I ask, you know, do you have tahini sauce? I'm using the right word. I'm like, do you have tahini sauce? And she's like, well, yeah, it's right down that aisle. It's over there. And I go walking by again and I'm blowing right past it. And now I'm getting annoyed because like now I'm like an hour in this store looking for this stupid sauce. All right. So I go back to her. I said, I'm really sorry. I'm just not seeing it. So she she comes and she's nice enough. She grabs it for me and I look at it and I'm like, oh, okay. Still thinking it's this white sauce in the, in this can, you know? And so I get home and I open the can and I literally open it and it's all brown and stuff, you know? Cause it, and I'm like, uh, what the hell, man? It's brown. And then I Googled it and I realized I was completely on the wrong content. Well, you know, I was so wrong, but I was like, all right, well, but I did like the tahini sauce because that's more sesame. That's more like the, yeah. the Thai stuff, right? Yeah. All right. So that was a sidebar that not really sure it was worth going into, but anyway, so obviously the lamb pairing, uh, meat stew with some um, root vegetables. And again, here's the bacon. So I'm thinking, Deb, this is kind of close to your meatloaf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be kind of close to your meatloaf. This has the bacon in it. Um, it just doesn't have the tomato. And here's my concern is you're not liking the tomato. Right. And, I don't know if I'll, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Right. So I, I'm wondering if it's going to intensify the tomato on, on your palate in the wine. Um, so beef stew with bacon. Uh, Grilled beef steak. Okay. Oh, really? So I look up, I look up game meat. Okay. And this is the first thing that came up in Google. So I immediately was like, what the f right? Squirrel? squirrel? Really? Seriously? Squirrel? But it, great British chefs are making a squirrel. I'm like, I, I didn't know people yeah. ate squirrel. But I had to put it in there because it's considered game, and I thought it was pretty funny. Um, but I, I squirrel. So uh, I'm fine with that. Really, game meats, not necessarily squirrel. But if there's anybody out there that eats squirrel... <laughs> I, you know what, I, I will send you a bottle of wine if you're in the U.S. I will send you a bottle of wine if you show me the squirrel and you eating it, because that, that is just insane to me. Like, I don't think we need to eat squirrel. Yeah. And all I'm thinking, all I'm thinking is like, um, Elmer Fudd out there, be very quiet. I'm hunting squirrel, you know? <laughs> I can see, I can see Coca-Vin. Coca Coca-Vin? Okay. Yeah, yeah, pairing. 
I, yeah, right. Um, and now this one I think is very much for um, the that earthiness. So we're t I was you know you were talking about the leather that the the potential for the leather, um, that earthiness and you know how I said it's the kind of wet mossiness that's in there. That this yep. is gonna that mushroom risotto is going to be the jam with this. And then, of course, you know, I cannot have a food pairing without giving off the cheese. So the recommended cheese uh, for uh, Zena Mavaro is aged Gouda and cheddar. Okay, I can see that. So that is the food pairings. I like it all but the squirrel. Yeah. I just had to put the squirrel in because, like. I'm going to be haunted by that. I know. It's going to be a little squirrel. Yeah. yeah. Cute little squirrel. Who eats a squirrel? It's like, who yeah. eats pigeon? I'm sorry. Who eats pigeon? Oh, uh, I had pigeon when I was in France. No, no see, no. Oh. No, 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 no. At the end of it, I just gave it to Paul. It's like, I can't eat anymore. This I mean, there's a lot of stuff I don't eat, but there's things that I don't understand how people eat. Like, like yeah. why would you eat a squirrel? Why? I don't know. Why? That, uh, that was gross. But anyway. anyway. I've got meatloaf downstairs waiting for me. <laughs> Is there a squirrel in it? No, there is no squirrel. We're going to leave you with some facts. And I really don't have that many um, pictures to go with it. But uh, one of the things I want to leave you with is um, Kesimaro, according to this guy here on YouTube, um, means acid black and it is the dominant red grape of northern Greece and a little factoid Kesimaro of Nasser was the only wine which after a transatlantic trip to America would arrive unspoiled oh so that's that was just interesting it is the signature grape of Macedonia region mm -hmm. um in the Nauster region, the vineyards are located in the southeastern slopes of Mount Vermin, protected from the cold northern winds, and they take full advantage of the sun's warm rays, warm rays during the midday. Let's see, it's just um, a picture, a nice picture of the vineyard. Um, while Nauster is the predominant region. Where Kestimravo is grown, it's also, um, like I said before, in a bunch of other regions, the Amateo, the Gaumis. All, all of the regions we can't pronounce. <laughs> yes, and um, Rapsini, and um, it's also made um, dry wines, sparkling wines, rosé wines, and sweet wines. Um, and in in different regions, um, they can blend it. And um, it's considered one of the dozen and a half or so world um, class grapes. So it's that that would have been a first because I you know this isn't a grape that is normally is spoken in everyday wine conversation so it's it is considered one of the dozen and a half or so world-class grapes so beautiful take there but that's a vineyard and uh that's a vineyard and now sir very pretty yeah so that's all i got all right i like it i like it a lot it's and it's it's, it's opening fan. up it's opening up even more um like I said, there there is the um, there is some sour cherry coming through. Um, I it's it's pretty. It's a pretty wine. And that that first the first sip that I had that I was like, ooh, I'm tasting the alcohol, um, which is only thirteen percent. Isn't that horrible? I say only thirteen percent. Um, uh, is no longer there. Like now I'm sipping it and it's not, it's not there, but 
Um, it's really the first wine that we've had that I've had in a while that I I truly salivating at at the acidity and the tannins just were were elegant. They they were there, but they were just coating the tongue and allowing those flavors to continue. And the more I'm tasting it, the more red fruit that is coming through. It's really, um, that plum is there, the, which I guess is a black, but the plum is there. The, there's the cher the sour cherry, um, even, um, a little bit of, um, arom the aromatics, uh, floral aromatics are, are coming through more. Um, you know, there's, it's, I, it's beautiful. I like it. See, I'm not, I'm not a fan and maybe it's cause you know, yours is older. So that might have something to do with it too. Right. Mine's old. Yours is five years old. Right. So maybe yours is still a little too tight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure I, I do I'm getting the plum and the cherry as this opens, but I have a real sour on the finish. Okay. It really gets sour on the finish. It's like so, a sour, you know, those red sour cherry gum, not gum, but those sour cherry candies. Okay. No. Like, no? Oh, my God. I grew up on those things. Uh, sour candies? Yeah. They're, they're, no, no. They're no. soft. They're round. They're round. They're red. And when you bite into them, they're they're uh, chewy. Um, and they're called sour cherries. Okay, no, I, I guess I guess I didn't have those in my childhood. Oh, yeah. So that's that's in here too. It's 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 supposedly only medium acidity, but I'm really getting. I, I would say this one is high, is high acidity. All right, Deb. So tell us about next month. So next month we visit the Yara Yara Valley, For Australia. Put the link in the uh, show notes there. Okay. Sign up. And, uh, we, July, we oh, July, what day? July is it? 15th, uh, right? July 15th, Monday, July 15th, eight o'clock. Yeah. And I don't think we've done Australia. Have we done oh, any oh. Australia? No, 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 no. So, yeah, we're going to, well, we'll rectify I, I, that this time. The valley will be, um, easier to find than Greek wine. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, I think so. Yeah. So. Well, I am um, going to chill for the rest of the night, and um, I'm going to have another glass uh, while I'm I sit and watch Family this, Guy. I'm going to sit and see how this pairs with the um, with the meatloaf. Yeah, let me know. Yes, I will. I will. Let me know. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Yes, thank you for yeah. joining us. Whether it's on Facebook Live or on YouTube or live with us tonight, we appreciate all of your support. Come back next we, month for Wine for Beth Street Letter Y. And we hope that uh, we're opening your your eyes and your palates to try new and different wines. And even though this, I'm not a big fan of this, but Lori is. I I might try an older one if I can find if I can find it. You know, right. um, an, an older vintage that I might like better. Right. Um, well, you know what? Did, maybe I'll go to Hohokus before I head out um, and pick up the other bottle. And then uh, when I get back in September, we, you know, okay. maybe we come can down for a weekend. Yeah. Come on down for the weekend and yeah. give it a, give it a try. So you can taste this sounds because good. it's nice. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So thank you everybody right. for joining. Please uh, head over to winefabetstreet.com so you can register for any of our future uh, seminars along with just watching our past ones in case you've missed any of them. And again, I can be found at dracinawines.com but also at all the social media channels at Exploring the Wine Glass for the blog and the podcast. And I can be found on HutzValleyWineGoddess.com. And I'm on all the social media channels as well as um, HB Wine Goddess on Twitter and Instagram. And um, I'm trying to think, Hudson Valley Wine Goddess on Facebook. There we go. So 
Have a great evening, guys. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of Exploring the Wine Glass. Thanks for listening. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like me to discuss, please reach out on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Exploring the Wine Glass. I'm also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoyt Budd. Of course, you can always email me at exploringthewineglass at gmail.com. If you enjoyed our podcast, please rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast catcher to help others find me more easily. Until next week, slancha.